The House will come to order. <laughs> Prayer by the chaplain. Good afternoon. I'm Obi Ballinger, pastor at Edina Morningside Community Church. I'm grateful to be here and uh, particularly today on the 13th anniversary of ordination to serve a congregation in St. Paul Park. Let us join our hearts in a spirit of prayer and attentiveness. O oh God of wisdom, your light blesses creation throughout this land of sky-tinted waters. As our elected representatives gather to conduct the people's business of this day, bring to our imaginations every sacred part and person of this state, north to south, east to west, metro and greater Minnesota, all illumined by your one light. Let the North Star of Truth be revealed in the work of these leaders and their staff today. As we seek your blessing, stir the conscience of our representatives with the weighty responsibility of their elected calling. Keep them humble when tempted to forsake their oath of service to all and pursue personal or partisan ambitions instead. Grant them freedom from those concerns of campaigns and contributions that curve the mind to favor some and forsake others. Lay on their hearts the stories of those who are least able to lobby and most in need of just care. Lead them to imagine creative alternatives in situations where your servants feel they must settle for the least common denominator rather than rising to a greater good. And then, O oh source of light, when day fades to night, send all your people to rest in the reassurance that hard work done well gladdens your spirit and extends your compassion. Repair what imperfections remain at day's end until that day break when all your people and all this beautiful land gathers in your everlasting light. Amen. The chaplain for today is Pastor Obi Ballinger from Edina Morningside Church in Edina, Minnesota. Pledge of Allegiance. Please recite, remain standing and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk will take the roll.
The clerk will close the roll. A quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. Journal of the House, 93rd session, 2023, 10th day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Thursday, January 19th, 2023. If there is no objection, for the reading of the journal will be dispensed with and the journal will be approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business is on your desk and online. If there's no objection, the reports will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the reports are adopted. Second reading of House Files. <clears throat> Second reading House File number six. Second reading. Second reading House File number 34. Second reading. Second reading House File number 94. Second reading. Second reading House File number 117. Second reading. Second reading House File number 194. Second reading. Second reading House File 198. Second reading. Second reading House File 205. Second reading. Second reading House File 279. Second reading. And second reading House File 451. Second reading. Introduction of House Files. The following House Files have been offered for introduction today. The Chief Clerk will report the House Files and give them their first reading. Introduction of first reading of House Files 637 through 754. First reading House Files 637 through 754. Calendar for the day. The first bill on the calendar for the day is Senate File 40. The clerk will report the bill. Senate File number 40, number one on the calendar for the day, an act relating to unemployment insurance providing for additional benefits, the second engrossment. Members, please take your conversations off of the House floor, into the alcoves, or into the retiring room. The member from St. Louis, the author of the bill, Representative Lislagard. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and members. Um, this is uh, the UI bill, the unemployment uh, extension for the workers um, at North Shore Mining and the um, Noble Blasting Company. I'm going to run through the bill before I uh, speak from my heart, obviously. This bill is straightforward and cons it consists of six subdivisions. Subdivision one tells us who is covered by this bill, workers uh, in the iron ore industry who were laid off between April 3rd, 2022 and March 4th, 2023, plus the workers in the explosive manufacturing industry. Subdivision two provides additional eligibility requirements, including that a worker has exhausted their regular UI. Subdivision three states that are laid off states that laid off mining can collect up to 26 additional UI benefits. Subdivision four addresses a situation where a worker again can use the 26 weeks. Subdivision five states that Cleveland Cliffs North Shore Mining will pay back the UI trust fund uh, for additional benefits paid under this bill. Dino Noble will not have to pay. Subdivision six provides that workers who are already receiving Federal TRA assistance are not eligible for the benefits. Uh, this bill has an effective date retroactive to August uh, 14, 2022. Um, this is when they originally laid off in May. Um, obviously, uh, everyone who knows me knows that this is uh, personal uh, for me. Um, I, I, I come from mining. Um, I, uh, my grandfather helped build Erie Mining Company that became LTV. Um, where I worked until I lost my job uh, at 27 years old, married with two children. And uh, it set me on this path. And when you look at the history, because um, this doesn't, this 26 weeks doesn't happen all the time across the state of Minnesota. But when they reference LTV, that was me. When I was 27 years old, married with two children, and this benefit was one of them that truly helped us and the devastation. People don't understand when they say, well, people get laid off all the time, just go, find, go, go work somewhere else. I wanna put in perspective for you that in the surrounding communities, so the mind is in Babbitt, the plant is in Silver Bay. 
And then you think about their surrounding communities. Aurora's population, 17, I round it up. Uh, Aurora's population is 1,700. Babbitt's is 1,400. Hoyt Lakes is 2,200. And Silver Bays is 1,600. And as a former city councilor and a mayor, let, think about this. This whole benefit paid is $10.26 million. Aurora's annual budget, all inclusive, in, two, in 2022 was 2.4 million. Babbitt's, 2.5 million. Hoyt Lakes, 5 million. And Silver Bay, 5 million. That doesn't even add up to $15 million for all of their communities spending in their budget. That's how significant $10.26 million is. There's no cost um, you know, to the general fund. It's, uh, it's $310,000 that will affect the, uh, the trust fund, uh, the unemployment trust fund. But Cliffs uh, is a wonderful company. It's one of them companies that is leading the way in the transformation in how the industry is working. And this is no fault of the workers. This is no fault of Cliffs. Um, it is a supply and demand issue. Cliffs used to be a pellet. And now they are integrated company that is leading the way um, in this industry. And so um, the workers, no fault of their own, um, it is just the cycle that we live in. And uh, I'm proud to say that um, in this body, I have, I've helped farmers, I've helped small businesses, um, and now it's time to help the people of the Iron Range. And uh, the bipartisan support that I've gotten um, in this body, it means a lot to me. Um, you know, on both sides of the aisle, it, it's, it's not about Democrat or Republican, it's about helping people. And that's why I ran. Um, you know, I'm very, very proud of where, I, you know, I tell people the history and traditions of the Iron Range run as deep as the minerals under our feet. You know, and, uh, and I'm proud of, of, our, our, of our lineage and our, our heritage. And uh, it is a tough, it's a tough world um, up on the Iron Range. This, it's cyclical. So I'm asking for your help. Um, I would like, Madam Speaker, if I may, um, I would like uh, my colleague from the other side of the aisle, Representative Scraba, to have a, a moment to uh, say a few words. He was a former mayor and now uh, the state representative from Ely. The member from St. Louis, Representative Scraba. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Dave. Um, I rise in support. Uh, these are my people. These, these folks have grown up on the Iron Range. They got jobs on the Iron Range, and now they're in idle. They don't like being idle. They like working. They want to work. They have every opportunity to work. They just need to be called back. While they wait, they need our support. It's been uh, over 13 weeks, uh, 20 weeks, so we're trying to go retro, uh, go back to November and it'll carry them through this summer if they need that. We probably don't need that, but it's the least we can do. When I campaigned um, in October and November, I spent a fair amount of time in Silver Bay, and that was the topic for, our, for the folks in Silver Bay. How can you help? How can you help? And now, uh, bipartisanly, we are helping. We're going to, um, hopefully we will pass this, and uh, my constituents will uh, stay another day and hopefully get the mine going so we can keep everything going. Um, just uh, our, our estimates, if it takes $10 million to fulfill this, our unemployment insurance fund is about a billion. So it's really not a big hit on it and um, Cliffs will help pay it back. With that, Madam Speaker, I yield. Thank you. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, Senate file number 40. Third reading. Any further discussion to the bill? The member from Dakota, Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and Representative Lislegard, thank you for bringing your bill forward today. Uh, I'll be voting in favor of your bill today. Uh, you said it best in your comments. Uh, you used the word help. And I think it's important to note that there are many separate ways to help people, and the bill that you have before us today uh, is one way to help. Uh, so I do support that, and I know that you have other ways that you are working to help your district as well.
But Madam Speaker and Representative Lislegard, it is important for members of this body and the state to know that there are some members who are not helping your region of the state. Uh, there are some members of a political party that are literally choking the life out of northeastern Minnesota right now from economic development. And Madam Speaker and members, it's important for members to hear an illustrative story of what is going on right now in our state. Uh, as many people know that there is a transformation taking place in the energy sector in the uh, United States, um, particularly motor vehicles, that we are reducing the amount of vehicles that will be running on gas, and we'll be increasing the amount of vehicles that will be running on electricity. Uh, this is a good thing. It doesn't mean every car is going to run on electricity, but a lot of them are. And the Biden administration has wisely decided that replace it, taking our current dependence on foreign oil and replacing it with a foreign dependence on critical middle, minerals is a bad idea. So from the supply chain of electric vehicles, the clean energy supply chain, from mining to mir uh, minerals to processing to development, there are huge investments taking place across the country. Uh, giant lithium uh, ion battery recycling center in Charleston, South Carolina, battery plants in Georgia, Tennessee, Ohio. And right here in Minnesota, we have an opportunity to be at the front of the clean energy pipeline. And so we have a large nickel mine. Now, I know there's a debate about whether Aiken County is in the Iron Range, and I don't want to get involved in that. Okay, I don't want to get in that fight. But there is a huge nickel deposit in the Tamarack Mine in Aiken County. Huge. And nickel is needed for electric batteries. And so a company called Talon has a project, the rights there, to extract this mine, very, very rich. There's only one nickel mine in the United States of America right now, members. One, it's in northern Michigan. And that's going to be retiring, begin depleted in the next couple of years. So what Talon is going to be doing, their plan is to take that material from the ground, put it on rail cars, rail car it out to western North Dakota, where the high-end processing is going to be done. That's where, the, that's where the nickel is going to get processed with $430 million of private sector investment. Now, if you're asking yourself, how on God's, God's green earth can we be advocating for clean energy by taking part of Minnesota, putting it on a rail car, and running it via diesel locomotives out to western North Dakota? Representative Garofalo, that's a hell of a lot of emissions. How on God's green earth can we be doing that? The reason why they're doing it is because they can't build anything in Minnesota. And that's not even the worst part about it, members. Here's the worst part. The Biden administration, who is committed to getting more domestic sourcing materials, rightfully for, item, for, for batteries, took a look at Talon's plan and said, yeah, you're right. You can't build anything in Minnesota. The federal government is giving Talon over $100 million, $100 million to take the stuff from Minnesota and, and via train, move it out to Western North Dakota, okay? That's the stupidity of Minnesota's regulation and environmental laws right now. So Madam Speaker and Representative Lislegard, thank you for helping the workers today. Thank you for doing that. And I know that you know there's a lot of ways to help people in northeastern Minnesota and to get to the front of the clean energy pipeline, and I know that you work on that. But I would also call on members of the majority party to wake up to wake up and recognize the destruction of the policies that you are advocating for and have enacted in this state. Let's help Minnesotans with jobs. Let's help Minnesotans with economic activity. Madam Speaker, Representative Lislegard, again, I'm supporting your bill. Thank you. The member from Chisago, Representative New Brindley. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I'm wondering, would Representative Lislegard uh, yield for a question? He will yield, Representative New Brindley. Thank you, New Madam Brindley. Speaker. And thank you, Representative Liz Lagarde. I'm looking at Subdivision 5 on charging of benefits, um, and it's saying that uh, this benefit may not be used to compute the future unemployment tax rate of the taxpaying employer. Can you explain that? I mean, typically, obviously, with unemployment insurance, when an employer, uh, when, when, when employees are required to, to take advantage of the unemployment insurance trust fund, it affects an experience rating so that those, those employers take on the brunt of those costs. So I'm wondering if you can just explain that subdivision for us. Representative Lislegard. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, I'm one of those individuals that, that likes to rely on experts in that field. And uh, Madam Speaker, if I may, um, Representative Knorr, who is an expert in this field, will be able to address your question. Representative New Brindley, would you like to ask Representative Knorr to yield? 
sure, he is welcome to answer the question. <laughs> Representative Noor will yield. Representative Noor. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I think we've had the debate about the unemployment in the last session. And if you recall, we invested $2.7 billion to make sure that no business is impacted by an increased tax rate on the unemployment. Members, it's $2.7 billion that we took from many programs and invested in that employment. Uh, quite frankly, initially before that, we forgave businesses, we held them harmless for the experience rating and many other issues. And for this instance, it's no different than what we did in the previous process. And quite frankly, the industry that we're talking about right now, they are paying at the highest rate of the experience rating. There's a threshold. It cannot be more than 8.9% when it comes to the experience rating. And quite frankly, because of the unemployment and everything else that has been happening, uh, that does not impact an industry that is already paying at the highest rate of experience rate. Likewise, let me report that right now, we have $1.7 billion in the UI Trust Fund. That is a surplus. And let me say this, in the first quarter, which I'm hoping that by April 30th, we will see that number reach more than $2 billion. And that means every employer will see a reduction based on the requirement once we reach the solvency point of 1.0 equivalent amount for the UI Trust Fund. So this increase is not something significant for any employers, knowing that we have invested in, knowing that many employers may see a reduction based on the level of the trust fund today. That's the response, uh, Madam Speaker. Thank you so much, uh, Repre Representative Lissigard, for carrying this bill. Representative New Brindley. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So to translate into layman's terms for folks, uh, it sounds like, so what happens when an employer uh, lays off employees, they have an experience rating. And when employers uh, em lay off employees a lot, which would apply to seasonal work, things like this, they'll have a higher experience rating. Those who uh, lay off very few employees over time have a lower experience rating. Those with a high experience rating pay more into unemployment insurance. Um, now, of course, the purpose of this bill is to support the workers on the Iron Range. And I am certainly going to, to do that today, and I'm gonna vote yes on that bill. Um, but, Representative Liz Lagarde, I would encourage you to learn more about the unemployment system when you, when you bring these bills forward, because this is really important stuff when you're talking about unemployment insurance. Because what that means, if the experience rating for this employer cannot be raised, then that means that every other employer is gonna have to pay those costs. So uh, I, I would just encourage you to make sure that you understand the implications of that. And Madam Speaker, would Representative Liz Lagarde yield for one more question? He will yield. Representative New Brindley. Although perhaps this will be for Representative Knorr as well. He, he addressed it a little bit, but I, I would love a more direct answer. I'm wondering, I don't know what the total cost of this will be. Um, and obviously when the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund drops below solvency, it automatically increases uh, the tax rate for employers. And I just want to ensure that this is not going to do that. Representative Liz Lagarde. Well, um, thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, I, once again, I would defer to my colleague that is an expert. If you heard him, he knows in depth. And I'm gonna do the best that I can, but I'm not here trying to say that I'm the smartest guy in the room. I'm here to fight for people. And so if you're looking for a question or if you're looking for an answer, just show respect because I just gave you the, the, a guy that knows a whole lot more than I do. Please, right? So let's just show respect. If you're looking for an answer, I'm deferring to somebody that knows it better than me. I'm not here to play politics. Representative New Brindley. Madam Speaker, I, I, my, to my understanding, when you have questions about the bill, it's customary to ask the bill author. 
about that bill. Um, it's also so customary to strange. keep your comments focused on the legislation and not personalities. Representative Which New Brindley. Which I believe I did, Madam, Madam Speaker. You and have the someone floor. someone else did Rep not. Representative New Brindley, you have the floor. Uh, I am not the one whose motives were just, excuse me, Representative Liz Lagar's motives were not called into question. Mine were. Mine were, Madam Speaker. The prohibition is on personalities, not just motives. Representative New Brindley. The question remains, will this bill lower the unemployment trust fund to a point that the tax rate for employers is automatically increased? Are you requesting Representative Lislegard to yield? Yes. I am requesting Representative Knorr to yield. Representative Knorr. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative New Brindley. At this rate of 310,000, when we have invested 2.7 billion dollars, we're right now in a place whereby the trust fund will exceed what it's going to be. This will be historic high level, I'm assuming. That means employers may see a reduction because we have invested a lot in that trust fund in the previous session. So with that amount, there will be no impact to the other employers, knowing that the trust fund is right now in a good place, in a good shape because of the work we did last session. Representative New Brindley. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, that, well, well, I guess, I guess we'll let it go. We're all here to support the workers right now, but I'm not sure we got a clear answer there. Yes, we, we made sure that the unemployment trust fund was solvent last year, but now we are dipping into that trust fund significantly. So yes, based on last year, I understand that those rates, we held those harmless, uh, but what I'm wondering specifically is if, if this is going to affect those rates, and I'm not sure we got that answer. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, there's a group of people on the Iron Range with really critical jobs who are currently out of work. They don't have other options. Their industry is mining and it is currently shut down. And through no fault of their own, these workers don't have other options. They don't have other employment options so that they can't just transfer, you know, I mean, it, most of us have lots of open jobs in our districts where we would love to have a workforce come in and be able to fill those jobs, but that's just not the case on the Iron Range. Um, and so I'm happy to support the bill today, but Madam Speaker, it would be helpful if we had uh, better information on the impact on whatever we do and whatever we send out of this chamber. The member from Itasca, Representative Igo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, this is a, a good bill today for the Iron Range. Um, I think I want to start with talking about uh, the name of the Iron Range. And, you know, the delegation members in this room, we all know it's the Masaba Range, Masabi Range. What that means is the word giant. Um, and that's what I think of when I think of our home on, on the Iron Range. You know, the men and women that built the Iron Range built the state that we live in, built the country that we are so blessed to call home, and they're going to continue building our country for the next generation of workers after them. This bill today is going to make sure that those workers at North Shore are taken care of until they can go back to work building our country, building our state, uh, and keeping our Northland strong. You know, um, I want to thank Representative Garofalo for what he said, because I think he made a good point too. Today is about helping the workers who need it right now. But I think we're just beginning. And I think with the help of this chamber, on both sides of the aisle, we can start investing in the workers that built this state, built this nation, and are ultimately gonna build the world. We need to remember how important those men and women are who go into those mines every day and give us everything we need. There was very, very important and bold rangers that sat in this chamber before me and that will sit in this chamber after me that told the story of who we are up north who told the story of how we harnessed the ground and built everything around us. Today when we vote, we want, I want us all to remember those workers. And remember that it's not, as, as Representative New Brindley said, it's not by any fault of their own that they're in this position. 
and they've been going a long time on these unemployment benefits and now have been without those benefits, trying to take care of their families. And like was said, they can't just leave. They can't just move away because the range is their home. And for the members who have visited there, and, and I always add, bring this up when I talk on the floor about our home, I encourage you to come up and visit us because I think you're going to want to make it your home too. And frankly, they're going to stay there and they're going to work in that mine. They're going to keep building it, making it better, not just for Taconite. But soon we're going to have copper and nickel and many more critical minerals coming out of the ground. And it's going to be critical that those men and women continue to call the range their home. So I'm proud to support this bill today. I want to thank all the members of the range delegation that put this bill together. You know, Representative Scrabble, for you to come down here in your first month of session and bring this bill, uh, working with the other members of the delegation, that's a lot. I commend you for that. So thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for the members of this chamber that brought this bill here today, and I encourage a yes vote. Any further discussion on the bill? Seeing none, Representative Listhegard. Well, thank you, everyone, and um, I truly appreciate all the support um, for those who uh, that support mining from afar, because it is the right thing to do. And um, I will tell you that in, um, years ago that I didn't believe in climate change. I didn't, but I do now. I believe in climate change, and I believe that we live in a global economy. We also live in a global environment. And I do believe we shouldn't be exporting our jobs or our conscience overseas to third world countries that don't have the same standards as we do. I believe that those conversations need to continue, and they will continue. Educate and advocate. Don't push people, draw people in with education to get people to understand the importance of what we're doing and where we're going. This world is transitioning. Make no mistake about it. And there is only one way to get to where we need to go, and that is to mine our way out of it. The very company, Cleveland Cliffs, if you do any of the homework of that company, what they have done in the last uh, about eight, nine years, it's incredible. That company that we're talking about, to Representative Garofalo's point, he wants to sell uh, new cars. Admissions is coming out of the tailpipes. So if we want to reduce stuff, we do need to invest in clean energy. Yes, I agree with every, everything that you're saying. And I'll, I'll stand shoulder to shoulder with you. Educate and advocate. But today, let's not forget what this is about the workers. Those conversations, they will continue. And I will be there side by side with you. But today is for the workers. And I appreciate and I would hope that everyone would support those workers. The clerk will take the roll on the bill. Members, please vote. You can change your vote on the... Uh, you were accidentally locked out. We got gotcha. you. Are you in... I got it. All members, having voted, the clerk will close the roll. On the board, no, thank He's you. on the board. Okay. You've unlocked him. Did you unlock him then? Okay. Perfect. He was accidentally Got it. There being 127 ayes and seven nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 26. The clerk will report the bill. House File Number 26, number two on the calendar for the day, an act relating to transportation. I recognize the member from Anoka, the author of the bill, Representative Cagle, to explain the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. This is the first piece of the IIJA puzzle, I guess you would say. Um, what this bill does is it uh, um, allows MnDOT for allows MnDOT 
to spend $315 million. Um, with the IIJA bill, there was a reauthorization of federal funding. Um, and so MnDOT has, was given the, the money, but does not have the authority to spend it because um, when we, we didn't, because we didn't pass the supplemental budget bill last year. The IIJA was passed um, before, or was passed after the last transportation budget. And so um, this is really just giving that spending authority to MnDOT so that we can make sure to get our state road construction workers out there to work this summer. Thank you. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, House file number 26. Third reading. Discussion to the bill. The member from Hennepin, Representative Hornstein. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I want to thank uh, Chair Cagle for bringing this uh, very important bill forward. Um, it was one of the first bills we heard in the Transportation Committee this year because there's urgency to this bill. It is absolutely critical that we start the process of matching this uh, very, very important federal bill that was passed uh, 14 months ago on a bipartisan basis uh, in Washington, D.C. And uh, this is the largest um, federal infusion into our public infrastructure since the days of Eisenhower, the uh, interstate highway system. And I think if you uh, consider inflation, it's really on par with the New Deal. So this is a big deal. And for Minnesota to maximize our ability to leverage these funds, we need to pass bills like this. And as Chair Cagle said, this is the first uh, in a series of bills. Uh, and finally, I wanted to uh, call your attention to this letter that uh, Chair Cagle has circulated uh, from uh, various contractors, business interests, and labor. There's a very broad coalition in support of this. By passing this today, we are able to get this money out so that these uh, projects can be let and uh, in time for the construction season. So members, it's a very important vote. Uh, please join me in voting green. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from Wasika, Representative Petersburg. Uh, th thank you, Madam Speaker. And for those of you that have been around transportation, you also know that uh, this bill also had no fiscal note because the money is actually in hand. And we will hear in another bill coming up in another a few days or so, uh, our agencies can only spend money that we appropriate, okay? And so even though the money is there, if we don't appropriate it, they can't spend it. So it's a, it's a good bill. It's one that allows transportation to start uh, the process uh, and keeping uh, workers employed. Thank you. I am voting green. Any further discussion to the bill? The member from Anoka, Representative Cagle. Thank you, members, and um, I just really look forward to the discussions that we're going to have on IIJA and IRA funding. Um, we have a huge opportunity to uh, move our state forward, and so I'm really excited uh, the work that we're doing, not only through transportation, but through sustainable infrastructure and all the members that are really engaged in that process. So it's, it's exciting. Stay tuned. Thank you so much. The clerk will take the roll on the bill. The clerk will close the roll. There being 134 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. If there's no objection, we will take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. <clears throat> Good
Cleveland moves that House Bill number 585 be recalled from the Committee on Health, Finance, and Policy and be re referred to the Committee on Human Services Policy. The member from Hennepin, Representative Cleveland. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This bill was referred to. Um, well, House Bill 585 is a bill related to human services, establishing a care evaluation uh, as a covered medical assistance for home care service. It's a new rate structure, and it, the bill really belongs in human services policy. So I ask, with the approval of the chairs, I ask that uh, House Bill 585 be uh, recalled from the Committee on Health Finance Policy and re referred to Committee on Human Services Policy. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. <clears throat> Schultz moves that House Bill number seven, now on the general register, be re referred to the Committee on Labor and Industry, Finance and Policy. The member from Morrison, Representative Schultz. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I appreciate uh, being recognized today on House File 7. I believe it has direct impacts to our Minnesota workers. And I happen to sit on the Labor and Industry Committee. House File 7 was recently heard on Thursday in the Climate and Energy Committee, and I believe it should be seen and heard uh, in the Labor and Industry Committee to involve our Minnesota workers in every corner of this state who will be directly impacted by the impacts of 100% clean energy by 2040. So that is my motion, Madam Speaker. Discussion. The member from Hennepin, Representative Long. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. The bill was referred to the correct committee, which is the Climate and Energy Committee, and I'd ask members to vote no. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. The motion does not prevail. Schultz moves that House Bill number seven, now on the general register, be re referred to the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, Finance, and Policy. The member from Morrison, Representative Schultz. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I am so excited about your great energy here in the room to save the planet, to save the earth, which is exactly why this bill, House File 7, should go to the Environment and Natural Resources Committee, and I ask for your support. Member from Hennepin, Representative Long. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd urge members to vote no. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. no. The motion does not prevail. Franz and moves that House Bill number seven, now on the general register, be referred to the Committee on Sustainable Infrastructure Policy. The member from Douglas, Representative Franson. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Imagine my surprise when I am the uh, lead on the Sustainable Infrastructure Committee and House File 7, which deals with infrastructure, is not being heard in that very important committee. This is a bill, House File 7, that is going to uh, wipe out baseload power. We are going to have prime farmland that is going to be used for solar panels and wind turbines, putting us at a potential conversation of do we want food or do we want to heat our homes? We've got coal plants shutting down. We're not sure how uh, those coal plants are going to be repurposed. And I have articles to back up what our friends in Europe are dealing with by going to net zero, which is what this 2040 plan is. Let's see, today in the Times, welcome to green Britain. Affordable electric cars, not viable, car baker warns. The Daily Telegraph, new peak rates mean charging electric cars more expensive than petrol. I think these conversations need to be heard in the Sustainable Infrastructure Committee. Let's see here. Oh, this is a good one. Green, cold, and poor. Relying on wind power means Britons must get used to cutting energy use, says National Grid. Oof. Norwegian shipping company bans electric vehicles over fire fears. 
Oh, let's see. The Daily Mail reports today, two in five supermarket electric car chargers found not to be working. Imagine, you're on your way to the Capitol to do the people's work, and you have to charge your electric car, and the car charger doesn't work. Oh, the BBC News, net zero Britain, UK steel industry a whisker away from collapse. The National Review, January 20th headline, Andrew Stutterford, the false promise of electric cars. Ah, uh, this is a really sad headline. This takes place yesterday, January 22nd. National grid to pay customers to cut energy use as cold weather continues. That's from the Daily Telegraph. I've got tons and tons of headlines from our friends in Europe, which we should be taking a lesson from, so we don't repeat what's happening in Europe. But House File 7 is going to repeat the same issues happening in Europe. That is why I feel House File 7 desperately needs to go to the Sustainable Infrastructure Committee. Members, I urge a yes vote. Thank you. Member from Hennepin, Representative Long. Members vote no. Member from Wright, Representative McDonald. Madam Speaker, I would uh, echo Representative Franzen's uh, request to have this go through the Sustainable Energy Committee and Labor and Industry Committee. And what was the other one, Representative Ice? Environmental. Environmental. Uh, so the marijuana bill, uh, the majority, you Democrats over there, that's going through, I think, what, six to eight different committees. Six to eight committees. To, to pass marijuana, which is a lousy idea for the state of Minnesota to, to begin with. This one bill, and Representative Long, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I like to be corrected when I'm wrong. It's not often, but I will take the correction. Uh, this bill is going through one committee, maybe two, I suppose, uh, ways and means. This bill, Minnesotans should know, a recent study by the American Experiment, decided, said that it'll cost over $313 billion in 2022 dollars, for the next, until 2050. And it'll cost, are you listening, folks? You listen to this? If you don't, that's fine. I'll send you a memo on it. In Minnesota, if you're listening, if you're watching the news, House File 7 will do to what, what California is doing to Californians. This will cost average households $4,890 per year, every year, and to the year 2050. That's the facts. That's the science, folks, the science. The studies are there, the numbers are there, it's completely unsustainable, and yet the majority wants to whip this through just as quick as you did that bill last week. Without only one committee, but your second priority of marijuana smoking in this state, you go through ten committees. Seriously, folks, House File 7, one committee. Well, Minnesotans, listen up. Call your state legislator, because it's going to cost you $4,890 every year until the year 2050. So if you think that this bill should just go through one committee and that's it, then fine. Then you're not being very responsible as your representatives representing your people. But I propose that we vote for this bill, that it goes through sustainable energy, labor and community, labor and industry, which I'm the lead on, so I'd love to see that as well, Representative Schultz. What else? Don't California, Minnesota? Folks, Rep Madam Speaker, this is the bill that will affect us and be unsustainable, it'll be very costly, and it'll be very cold. So for the sake of your children, your grandchildren, and your constituents, vote yes to have this bill go through yet another committee so we can shake it down and make it better. And I don't even think that could be if you went through every single committee in this, this uh, legislature. So I support Representative Franzen's motion to go through her committee. The member from Morrison, Representative Schultz. Madam Speaker, I'm just so encouraged by the amount of energy, once again, by the members of this body to this bill, House File 7, which impacts every Minnesotan, every Minnesotan. And when we think about the path that this bill has taken, should it come before the body this week? That's certainly not up to me. But members, let's consider the amount of people who are in that committee on Thursday. I don't sit on that committee. I'm simply asking to have the opportunity in committee with the members that we've talked about, and so specifically following Lead Franson here in the Sustainable Infrastructure Committee. We're involving Minnesotans, 
involving Minnesotans in the process of hearing the legislation that will impact them. Members, as we, as we look to the future, is this bill going to be heard in the dark of night? This bill might result in a lot of dark nights in Minnesota. Let's hear this bill in the Sustainable Infrastructure Committee. All those in favor of the France in motion, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, please say no. no. The motion does not prevail. Members, we are on announcements. Uh, the member from St. Louis, Representative Olson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members of the Ways and Means Committee, we will meet at 5 p.m. in room 200. The member from Hennepin, Representative Censor Mura. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. As I'm sure many of you have heard, this weekend a mass shooting took place in Monterey Park, California. This attack took place in a predominantly Asian American community on Lunar New Year's Eve after a fest popular festival in the area. More than 10 lives were lost, and so far we know the names of two of the victims, Mainan and Lillian Lee. We are still learning about their lives, but we do know that Nan, known as Mai Mai, loved to dance and spent many years at the dance studio where she was killed. According to a statement from her family, Nan was a loving aunt, sister, daughter, and friend, and was the family's biggest cheerleader. Today, we grieve with the Asian American community and communities across the country and in our state, including last week here in St. Paul, who have been subject to gun violence. As a member of the MAP Caucus and as the first Japanese American elected to the Minnesota legislature, I want to note that this tragedy is particularly devastating to the Asian American community who has been living in a state of heightened anxiety and crisis throughout the pandemic because of increased bias, discrimination, hate, and violence. I would like to ask this body to take a moment of silence to honor the lives lost in Monterey Park. I would ask us to learn the stories of the lives lost, and I would ask us to humanize the communities that are impacted and continue to make change to ensure cycles of violence are stopped. Now for a moment of silence, please. Members, please rise for a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, members. Other announcements? Any further announcements? Representative Long. Madam Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 4.45 p.m. Wednesday, January 25th, 2023. Representative Long moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 4.45 p.m. Wednesday, January 25th, 2023. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. Representative Long. Madam Speaker, I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Long moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. The House stands adjourned until 4.45 p.m. Wednesday, January 25th, 2023.